Hello lacrosse fans and friends. I'm Amanda Mastera from World Lacrosse, here to bring you some exciting news. Today marked day two of the World Lacrosse Annual General Assembly. And one of the major items that was approved today is the official rule set for the 6v6 discipline. All right, so what are the key aspects to this new sixes discipline, Don? You know, Amanda, when we, when we started this journey, really, we took the concepts of what the Blue Skies Working Group um, had asked us to, to do. So they had consulted with athletes. Um, they've had a, a series of trials around the world and uh, came to us with their concepts and said, now just put these into a, into a rule set. So, so in doing so, I think, you know, these were enlarged, you know, developed by athletes. You know, this would be the, really the first time um, you know, that I think athletes have had a huge voice, certainly in the sport of lacrosse in, in developing a full set. Um, they're harmonized, you know, so 85 to 90 percent of the rules are, are the same between men's and women. So I think that's going to be exciting for us um, to, to look at and take the best of what the, you know, how the women play and the best of how the men play. Um, we were really innovative when, when we did this, when we pulled them together. Um, you know, it's a smaller field size. Uh, you got, you know, with some flexibility for the members to be able to, to work on fields or pitches that they've got in their own, in their own areas. So we, we've given them that flexibility. There's a shot clock for the first time in international lacrosse. So I think that's going to be a, you know, a different variable and we'll have to see how that goes. But I think that's going to be really exciting for, uh, for the game. Um, we removed the fan from the women's game. So again, you know, I think that that will, um, will, will probably open up the offense a little bit. And there's no body check in the men's game. So with no body checking, the men are actually going to have to really learn how to use their, their stick and, and move their feet for a change um, when, when they defend. No face-offs, you know, um, after the scoring of a goal. So it's really going to be a fast-paced game. And, and I think with a simplified penalty structure, um, I, think, I think more people will, will um, understand the, the nuances of the game for, for people new to lacrosse. Yeah, I love that. I love how fast paced it is. So what are you most looking forward to and what most excites you about this new rule set? Well, yeah, again, a fast pace for sure. I mean, when the first time I saw it, I was amazed, you know, and it really is a blend of, of box lacrosse and field lacrosse um, that, that, you know, we've kind of built a hybrid for the game. So, so definitely pace of play, I think is, is going to be the, the most important thing. But I also think from a development perspective, this is, this is a game that allows more touches, um, allows players to be more engaged um, in the game. And, and so I think, you know, the, the game will really develop as a result of that. So I think as an entry level for a lot of new countries, um, I think the sixes uh, game it will be a fantastic opportunity for them. I love what you touched upon a smaller roster size when we interviewed uh, Coach Teeter after the Canada USA trial last year. One of his biggest takeaways was being able to utilize his entire roster, having everyone get touches on the ball. So I'm excited for this. And thank you so much for that insight, Don. We look forward to seeing this on the lacrosse field. Well, thanks very much, Amanda. Appreciate the opportunity. Brent, how are you today? And, and I'm excited to really kind of dive a little bit deeper into these sixes rule set. Yeah, thanks, Amanda. Doing very well. Excited to have a chat with you and uh, let everyone know uh, what we've been up to and uh, how the process got started up until today. So we're going to dive right in. How was this process conceived? How are the rules conceived? What did it look like? Well, it's, it's, it's been a long process. I guess we started in 2019 when the Blue Skies working group uh, sort of concluded its vision, I guess you could say, um, or took a pause in its vision, having run a, a few test runs of the sixes discipline. And it was time to kind of put pen to paper and we had sort of enough to work on as far as where they wanted this sixes discipline to go. Uh, we had enough trials to kind of see what it looked like. And we had enough consultation with the players to see what worked and what didn't. So when they contacted me to spearhead the working group or the drafting group, as it's often recall, uh, referred to, it was a challenge to, to really put the intricate nature of the game together from everything from, you know, lines on the field to implementation of different uh, penalties. 
And so we had to start by building out a working group and we wanted to do that by really getting individuals from all corners of the sport. And it was important for us to, uh, because the sport was sort of a hybrid approach. It was sort of a hybrid game of all the disciplines. So we needed to get the minds of, of each, each discipline together. And so we, uh, we brought in people from the box game. We, we tried to bring in some people from the, the women's game and brought in some people from the men's game. And then we wanted geographical diversity because we knew that, you know, starting a new discipline would require different hurdles in different corners of the world. So we wanted to make sure that, you know, the, the starting, the starting members were, were not at a disadvantage to the more experienced or, uh, you know, longstanding members. And so we, we kind of got the voice of different areas. And so, we did that as an initial phase. Uh, we vetted a number of people that were interested. Some were really interested at the beginning and fell off. Some were interested and stayed on. And, and so we ended up with really a core group uh, comprised of myself, Steve Stenderson, um, uh, Sachi Yamada uh, from Japan, uh, Dana Dobie from Canada. Uh, we had uh, Don Blacklock, who, who many people know, and uh, Lauren Charlotte as well as Tom Sutton. So, you know, again, grabbing some players, grabbing some officials, grabbing some administrators, uh, and, we, and we were sort of set with task. Yeah. yeah, so talk to me about the drafting process, right? The, this continued to evolve. What did you as a group take into account as you made these changes? Yeah, so anytime you're drafting something like a rule set, you, you can't expect to hit a home run, you know, in the first set. You have to, you have to look at it as very kind of a, a long process that consistently evolves with more discussion and more drafting. And, and as the draft comes together, you, you start to see the interplay in the draft. And one of the big underlying themes in drafting for us was harmonization. We really wanted to bring the two uh, the men's and women's sides together and the, in the box game really interwoven between that. And, and there are wide, dis, you know, wide differences between each of those disciplines. So trying to find current or common themes between them was really a focus of ours. And so uh, where do you start, right? So, okay, what does the game look like the most? For me, it kind of resembled box across a little bit the size of the field, the dimensions, the pace of the game, uh, the, shorter, the shorter squad size. And, and so it kind of resembled that the most. So let's start with the box rules. So we took out the box rule set and we started to chop it up. And we got a draft set in place and then it went out to the working group. And we just started to digest it and digest it. And it really didn't stomach with us well. So we kind of all just said, look, this isn't going to work. Let's scrap it. Let's not try to, to force anything here. And we went and then we took the women's and the men's rules and we kind of just went like that and said, okay, let's use this as our starting point. And then we brought in concepts from the, the box game. And then we had now sort of a set of rules that looked good, looked playable. But then we said, okay, we have the Blue Skies group and all the work that they've done. How do we bring their vision into the rule set? So then we kind of brought them over in and sort of try to transplant their concepts and their ideas into the rule set. And the next month from, you know, end of 2019, spring 2020, we did a lot of drafting, a lot of, you know, weekend calls where we just exchanged drafts, broke it up into different bits. And then we started the, the consultation process. And there was really two aspects to the consultation. One was the formal and one was the informal. The informal was us reaching out to our teammates, our, you know, our colleagues on the officiating side, the administration side, and just chopping it up with them, asking them about you know, whether they like this idea or that idea, or would this be feasible, how about this? You know, are we going too radical here? What do you, you know, uh, just give us your thoughts. And, and so we got a lot of great sort of intimate feedback in that respect. And then there was the sort of membership consultation periods, which many, many listeners and watchers will, will recall. We had two formal uh, consultation, membership consultation periods where we set the rules out to the membership for full dissection. And we got a lot of feedback from individuals and, and, and members, uh, 
right down to the line item, you know, uh, rule 3.4, you know, I mean, it was very, it was very intricate and it was extremely helpful for us. Um, when you're married to something like this document for a year, you sort of lose sight of things. And so the members really kind of helped bring us back to ground zero and really help us focus on making the rules as easy to play and understand as possible. So two membership consultations, we did some webinars uh, to answer questions and address different points with the members. We continued with those informal feedbacks and internal dis uh, informal discussions with, uh, with, again, everyone, teammates, officials, coaches, and condensed it into what I think is a pretty, pretty good set of playing rules. It's, I, I hope it's easy to understand. I appreciate that there's going to be wildly different views on whether there should be long poles in the game or whether the field length is not, you know, not uh, is too short or too long, whether the squad size is too small or too big. And that's, I think part of, for me, it's the great part of it to really have the first set of rules and to see where it goes. And, and again, it's, it's where I started. These are ever evolving. And so for me, uh, I'm excited to get them, see them play, uh, hear what the players have to say, because for me, that's the best test. No offense to the coaches and, and the officials, but for me, it's the players. I mean, this is, this is who makes the game. So I want to hear what the players have to say and then see how it evolves in five years and what it looks like and what the changes are, what we got right and what we got wrong. Dana, thank you for joining us. Give us a little insight. What was it like playing these 6v6 roles on the field? Playing the 6v6 version was exciting. It took me back to my box lacrosse days with a nice mix of my field lacrosse experiences and, and rolled it all in into one game. Um, so for me, you know, I find it so exciting and, and so fun. And also as a women's lacrosse player, I just felt so freed up from the rules side of things um, that we were really able to showcase our athleticism and our lacrosse IQ because there were so many less whistles and a lot more play and a lot of action as well as getting to play up and down the field and, and not being restricted with restraining lines and so many players on the field and the field being so big. But as you're playing the 6v6, you're just always in the action. So for a player, that's kind of, you know, a, a dream come true. You don't, you're not watching the play. You're constantly involved in the play. Well, fast pace is pretty exciting. Dana, what else excites you about the sixes discipline? What excites me most as a player with this 6v6 style is just the challenge. You know, there's nowhere to hide on the field. You have to be extremely fit. Your stick work has to be sharp. Um, and it's so exciting to think that there are players around the world who have never played box lacrosse or who have never played field lacrosse. So combining these disciplines together in, in all styles of lacrosse that we've seen around the world and and making this one kind of um, highlight package reel of lacrosse and, and allowing players to play that who haven't had that opportunity yet. I'm so excited to see the future of our sport and the athletes that we're gonna draw to our sport because of this style of the 6v6. From a coaching side of things, what I'm excited about for 6v6 is just being able to take all the experience and all the knowledge from all the different styles of lacrosse and throwing that into this, you know, being able to take your box lacrosse, small number game and your pick and slips, um, your defensive zones, as well as your field style and strategy of your transition and the quick pace of play. Um, and really kind of seeing how coaches kind of draw on all their different areas of lacrosse and, and what they're gonna do with their teams and, and how they're gonna strategize this. It's, it's so new that, you know, it's, it's exciting for us to think about the possibilities, but as well as coaches to implement some strategies from different styles of lacrosse or from other sports and kind of see that in action in the 6v6 is, is just so exciting. Um, and I can't wait to see what coaches come up with next. 